all the ad dollars, all of the dollar dollars, the service dollars, all the brands, all of them are now trying to solve for Amazon. And so if you have skills in this area, you are a unicorn. And if you are, you know, depending on what you're good at, you may be a gold unicorn, you might be a rainbow one, but regardless, you're a unicorn. And, and I would just say, um, you know, run with it. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, or anything in between. And now your host, Todd Welch. Welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur Adventure. I'm your host, Todd Welch. And today I have on Chris Freiberger. He is an Amazon matchmaker and founder at Enreach. And he also has a Bachelor's of Science in Aerospace Engineering from Iowa State University. And he does a lot of philanthropy as well. He's been a volunteer for Big Brother, Big Sisters, Pro Kids, and Peace Corps as well, which is really cool. Chris, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about your background? Sure. Thank you uh, for having me on, Todd. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, my background really is, you know, 25 years in the ad agency business. Um, I come from, so I've, you know, I've worked with a number of brands, different sizes of agencies, and really just come from that traditional ad agency world. Um, but really, the digital bent of that. So uh, you can think Google AdWords and SEO. And uh, back in the day, it used to be, well, back in my day, uh, maybe not yours, but, you know, back in the day, it used to be if you learned HTML, you made a lot of money making websites. And so uh, I come from back from those days. But um, about two and a half years ago, I just realized in that whole industry, the ad agency world hasn't reacted to Amazon whatsoever. Um, and so now you have this new ecosphere, as you guys well know, uh, providers and sellers and brands and this whole chaos well, wonderful, but chaotic world of Amazon. Um, and so what Enreach does is basically just net, uh, networks within that world and vets resources and helps match people together uh, to solve, I guess, problems, if you will. So, yep. Yeah, for sure. It, it always surprises me the number of people who started out like selling on Amazon and now have like an advertising agency or something like that. Yep. Uh, so yeah. So what you're saying is like the big advertising campaign companies are, have not transitioned into that world. They have not. I mean, this is a, you know, a, a stake, you know, for you to kind of measure off of is, you know, the largest one P agency. What I mean by that is just a regular agency client relationship, you know, will, will help you get up on Amazon relationship. Uh, the largest agency in the space right now has 200 people. Okay. So, um, and, you know, no names, but, you know, they're known in the industry and they, you know, and the like, but that's, that's really, you know, we're just getting started. Um, you know, in the, in the traditional agency world, the largest one has around 10,000 employees. Okay. Just, just as a stake. Um, and so it is just beginning. We can talk about what that means. And, you know, if you're a seller in this space, you have skills in the space. Um, you, it's, this is we're going to be good for for a decade at least. Um, it's because uh, everybody needs to be on Amazon. Absolutely, and it's good, right? It leaves a void for entrepreneurs like us to to fill that void. It does, and probably even do it bigger, better than some of the big companies out there. It, you're right, actually. You know, the, the sellers, if I may, you know, are the ones that are following the stuff day to day. They're trying the new techniques. They're participating pitting in the beta programs and the different ad types and trying different things and keeping their eye on Amazon day to day following it. And, you know, big brands can't do that. Um, and where again, if I may, is if you have that skill set, you're gold right now because everybody needs it. And even though you may have been doing it for a long time and you might think it's crowded right now and everybody's doing this stuff, it is not. You are a unicorn in outer space. Like I say that all the time. Uh, you know, and it'll be a long time before, I think it's 1997, dot, you know, uh, and Netscape just launched, okay? Or I think it's 2001 post-Google, okay? And so if you knew AdWords, you were, you know, or you, you, were, you ate well for a decade, right? Um, until everybody starts doing it and now it's ubiquitous. Well, we're that, that way again. It's its own dot-com environment. Yep, for sure. There's so much opportunity out there. It's amazing. And we're going to dive into a, a bunch of topics in Amazon today, like your matchmaking service, the job market, uh, venture capital and distribution, internationalization. 
Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun going over those topics because Amazon is changing all the time and getting bigger and better. And so if anybody's out there thinking about selling on Amazon, stop delaying, get going. But let's quick talk about, Chris, your guys' matchmaking service on Enreach. What is that all about? What are you actually sure. matchmaking? Sure, sure. So again, if you to go back maybe two and a half years ago, I, you know, all the brands I was working with in the agency environment say, you know, you do our content, you do our PPC, our SEO, you do our social media slash influencer stuff, all of that, um, and all the things that that entails. What about Amazon? Right. And, and for the most part, it was crickets. So I look over, you know, and you've got the agency environment that's growing, the sellers that have become agencies, as you pointed out, you know, everything's maturing. Right. And, you know, I, I call them Amazon years. Um, it's more like Amazon months. Um, and so it's matured over the really, you know, the oldest agency is about six or seven, eight years old. Um, you know, so we're just getting started. And when I looked over and just realized that, hey, you know, nobody's vetting these guys. There's a lot of fly-by-night stuff going on. There's a rich, rich, quick millionaire stuff. I mean, take these millionaire courses. You know, it's really easy. Well, what might have worked back then? Yeah, you could have made some money back then. But if this stuff's getting more and more complicated. You have to fire on a lot of cylinders on Amazon, and many, most of the time, you need an, as you grow, you need eventually you need an agency. And certainly, if you're a big brand, you need an agency. Well, my skill set to answer your question the long way around is um, when somebody comes to me, a brand comes to me, I've vetted. A lot of agencies, I've spoken to hundreds of them uh, in one in this one scenario, and they'll tell me what category expertise they need in, what their pain points are. They may be on their second agency, their third agency in the space because they're looking for maturity and a good account management and project management, and they do what they say they're going to do, and they execute their PPC plans, and they report back, and they use data and A-B testing, and, and on and on and on, right? They need all those things to succeed on Amazon now, so you need an agency. You need a, lot, a team, right? Yep. So what InReach does is it vets those guys, and it marries those guys. I'm free to the seller. I'm free to a seller, you know, a brand or a seller that needs an agency, and I charge a success fee to the agency side, okay, uh, as their provider. And so hopefully using my service, there's a better match there, a match made in heaven, a, a marriage made in heaven, if you will, because that's exactly what it almost feels like when you're choosing an agency, you're almost choosing a spouse. And so um, anyway, I digress, but. Yeah, and that that's really helpful because there's, if you're just looking for someone to do your ads, for example, you know, there's could be hundreds of different companies out there, some good, some not so good. Absolutely. It's almost impossible to know. It's not like you can go to um, Google and look up reviews of the companies really for this kind of stuff typically. So having a matchmaking service like you guys can be super helpful. Thank so, you. Is that something that anybody can apply to be in your directory, so to speak? Yeah. So if you're a service provider, um, and I don't know about you already, um, uh, I'm ha happy. Please reach out to me and, and, and both sides of the aisle. Please reach out. I, I love to have conversations. I learn more and more in this space uh, because it is small. It is a burgeoning community. And every conversation, I encourage everybody to have a conversation about Amazon with everyone. But that, that said, that kumbaya, right? Um, that said, if you uh, want to be in my quote unquote network, you know, reach out to me. It's not a formal application. It's more, I would actually look at your peers if you're recommended uh, to bring you in and what, what hole or what, what space on the shelf that you fill that I may not already have filled, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, because I do match with lawyers. I match with uh, financial, uh, like bookkeepers for Amazon, Amazon HR companies, hiring this space is a nightmare, uh, which we'll talk about, right? Um, programmers for APIs, um, you know, everything down to um, sometimes people call me Mr. Wolf from Pulp Fiction because, hey, you know, I just got delisted and I'll get a frantic call, you know, uh, one day and say, hey, I need to get back up and running, you know, yesterday. Um, and the right people to call that make that happen uh, is a challenge as well. And so I have those resources also. So, um, but yes, um, happy to talk with anyone. Yeah, for sure. And I think I've seen on your LinkedIn page something about a huge need for graphic designers that speak Amazon. Yeah, it, every space is being flushed out. It just has an Amazon logo on it. And the tools are a little bit rudimentary, right? You don't have, a, like, if you're in really into SEO, 
I would encourage you to get into Amazon SEO. And you'll look at the tools over here and you'll laugh, right? Because those tools developed over the last 20 years of, Am of Google, right? Um, but those two, but, but the need, it's, it's, but the space over here, and if I may, in Cincinnati, where I am, due to Procter & Gamble, I can throw a stone and hit six SEO companies, mm -hmm. okay? Honestly, they all sound the same or, you know, digital advertising companies, right? Or, or the sure. like, but if you added Amazon to one of those, it'd be cricket. Okay. Um, it's, it's just a whole new world. There's green pastures. I don't know what analogy you want to use. You know, the wild, wild west, that'd be a good one. And you're only as good as your posse. I mean, you can run with that one. Um, but that's the environment we're in right now. So I encourage maybe to tie into the other subject is add Amazon to your repertoire, uh, whatever you do. So. For sure. So uh, what's the best way to reach out to you guys if somebody is in need of some kind of specialist? Sure, sure. It's, uh, I'm at NREACH without the I uh, there. Uh, it's NREACH.com. Uh, um, you reach out to me that way. Uh, LinkedIn, it's Chris Freiberger. You can't miss a name like that. Um, and just feel, I'll just reach out and we can uh, you know arrange something. We'll talk from there. Okay, awesome. And that kind of what we were talking about kind of transitions us into the Amazon job market. Uh, and we wanted to dive into that, the kind of jobs and stuff that are available out there. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And this is really, you know, uh, this is out of born out of this, um, out of, you know, I have a lot of friends that are on the job market due to COVID. Um, and they're, they're very much, you know, very talented folks, uh, creatives and the like, um, that happen to be with agencies that, you know, through no fault of their own, that were part of a portfolio that just wasn't, wasn't COVID friendly. Okay. Uh, maybe they had managing accounts or working on account, those accounts. And that's unfortunately the world of Amazon agent or of, of agencies, I should say, that you're only, you expand and contract with the portfolio that you have. Right. So to those people, if you happen to be listening, if you're creative or a PPC manager or a sales agent or, uh, you know, an account manager or a project manager that's worked for agencies or, or the like, just add the Amazon aspect to it, okay? And learn Amazon and consume as much Amazon as you can. Because guess what? Salaries in that space just went about 30 to 70. I know this because I work with one of the only Amazon HR companies out there. But since COVID, since March, salaries have gone up 30 to 70% for you know senior executives, executives that know how to conduct themselves in front of large companies and run projects and the like. But if you add Amazon... You know, again, it's just a huge value. And so if you're creative that uh, we, you briefly mentioned, if you're into videography, get really get into Amazon videography and learn the format. What can you do with video um, in, you know, in a, on a listing? It's changing all the time. What about video ads and B-roll and that kind of stuff? Apply yourself to the Amazon world because it's just a reflection. It's just like a bizarro, Superman bizarro world, yeah. um, if that makes sense. So, Yeah, and it's, it's only going to get bigger. As we Amazon keeps growing, um, there'll be competitors, and those skills that you're learning for Amazon could probably easily transfer to Walmart or eBay or whatever company comes up uh, mm -hmm. to compete more with Amazon as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree, but there's so much to eat with Amazon. I mean, seriously, I, I don't dis, I don't agree with disagree with like for instance, uh, Walmart just launched their uh, DSP. Um, their their uh, DSP network for ads. Um, they have Walmart has eight percent of the traffic of Amazon. Okay, so you know if you're gonna, you know if there's a land grab, right? Which is what what's going on. It's more of a planet grab, but more on that in a second. But if it's a land grab, you know, are you gonna mess with, you know, this pat, you know, this smaller chunk? You know, I'm gonna eat a lot of, or am I just gonna start grabbing as much cake in the other? 92% of the world. Uh, and, and what I would say is also, that's only the dot com environment. You know, there are 14 other marketplaces out there as well. You know, so yes, those skills are important and I don't mean to dismiss them. Absolutely. There, I would learn anything in commerce. It's going to be gold going forward. Anything, a D to C, you know, web development, uh, you know, placing Facebook ads is going to play, be an SEO person. But I can guarantee if you add Amazon to it, it'll be much more lucrative to your career or your company or anything along those lines. Yeah, big time. E-commerce is exploding. Amazon said that in one year, their sales increased by 60%. Um, a lot of that thanks to everybody going online uh, with COVID and everything and not being able to necessarily go out. But yep. yeah, yeah. It's, 
I don't think that's going to reverse anytime soon. That's for sure. Well, no, no, no. I mean, they, it's quite the opposite. I mean, I, I, again, I spend most of my day, it seems like paste, you know, painting the environment we're in right now, but I truly mean it's like, it was supernova and now it's double supernova. And, and what I mean by that is just, you know, uh, the retail environment just shrunk 30%. Okay. Most of that they estimate probably will not come back. So this is the Macy's of the world. This is, you know, your, your mall, your local mall, which we had one close here in Cincinnati was on its death knell already, but COVID killed it. Um, uh, you know, no disrespect. Uh, but you know, so, the, the point being is all those ad dollars, all the ad dollars, all of the dollar dollars, the service dollars, all the brands, all of them are now trying to solve for Amazon. And so if you have skills in this area, you are a unicorn. And if you are, you know, depending on what you're good at, you may be a gold unicorn, you might be a rainbow one, but regardless, you're a unicorn. And and I would just say, um, you know, run with it. So, yep. hundred percent. So for whatever doesn't work out selling on Amazon, the skills that we're learning and how to do all this stuff can translate into some kind of career going yeah. forward for sure. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that large agency, the 200 employees, 60 of them are from the Philippines. Okay. The, the, with the Philippine government, just a little tidbit, and we'll, we'll get off the subject, but did the, the Philippine government came down because there you used to be able to get your VAs from there. Like my virtual assistant, my secretary was, you know, what you, you'd be able to get them from the Philippines because they're native English speaking, highly educated um, around the world. So you have 24 seven, you know, coverage and so on and so forth. Well, the government came down and said, okay, well, what other skills can we learn? And they said, Oh, a um, Amazon, you know, so if you want a PPC person, you to hire one, I should say, right. To have an employee, a full, an FTE, a full-time employee, the best chance of you hiring one right now would be from the Philippines and they're excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, highly trained, retrained in, in programs in a certain way, uh, quality controlled, tested, certified, because you, there's none of that in the Amazon world going on right now either. There's no developer environment. There's no certifications like you would with Google or Microsoft. There's none of that going on either. So anyway, the point being is that, yeah, it, these skills are highly coveted. 100% agree. I've got several VAs from the Philippines. So definitely know all about that. They do really good work over there. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. For sure. All right. Very good. So let's talk uh, a little bit about VC capital and the value of businesses. Cause that's always fun, right? We're building these businesses. Yep. Uh, maybe we grow it to a million in sales, 3 million, five, 10, 20, whatever the case may be. Yep. Uh, what are you seeing out there in terms of uh, the market for selling Amazon businesses? Uh, if there was like a triple supernova thing going on. Um, so your, your audience may or may not know about nine months ago or so, there was a company called Thras, uh, Thrasio, T-H-R-A-S dot I-O, I believe it's what it is. Um, they, got the, they were the fastest evaluation to a billion dollars in U.S. history. Um, and what they're doing, because I'm sure all of your sellers have gotten a phone call from them, if not repeated phone calls from them, is they got a lot of money and the capital money and they're going and they're buying sellers, brands um, up because they know they can come along. They have a team that can polish those, you know, those sellers just a little bit more and make a little bit more off them and flip them much like houses. Okay. So again, think real estate, you know, it's a real estate boom. It's a land grab. Okay. Yep. And so they come along, they lowball them. I, if I may, I'm not talking bad about thrass, but they'll give you maybe two or three X when you may be worth four or five X. But if you've lost your job due to COVID or, you know, you may not have realized what you have uh, by the tail, right? You, they'll come along and buy you, which is great. Good for them. Okay. But what that created is an environment of, of the Silicon Valley uh, money just woke up. New York money just woke up. A lot of, uh, private equity showed up. What that means for everybody is that now uh, there's a rush, there's a gold rush on top of all of this. Okay, and so if you are an agency or you're a brand or a seller with brands um, um, or a uh, distributor that's figured out how to get product in on mass onto Amazon, or if you're in certainly if you're an agency that knows how to pull all the levers and make and win the buy box, is your you know, again, I don't, I'm running out of analogies, gold, unicorn, stripe, something, right? 
Yeah. So that's 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 where we're at. I'm, I'm doubling back again on myself. But um, but yeah. So I mean, that's right now. What that means is that if you, for instance, are a brand um, that you have a brand that you've brought up over the last, you know, you've sold over the last years, especially if you have IP or you know you have a trademark in that brand, and it's made the transition over to Amazon, right? It's now considered post COVID, and it lives in the new world. Right, so it doesn't have to worry about the shelf anymore. Mm-hmm. You're now a brand that's worth four or five x what you were. Okay, um, if you're native to Amazon, so for instance, Anchor, the brand on Amazon, what was the first public company that was native to Amazon? That happened about six months ago. That was a huge wake up call. Okay, mm-hmm. so if you own a brand on Amazon, never mind the skills. Now we're talking about owning the, the actual brands. That is. The place to play, okay, um, because those brands are now worth it. In again, a multiple, but they, you know, for instance, I watch brands that were maybe three on the grocery store shelf turn themselves into number two in the Amazon space. And guess what? Number one called them and asked them how much. You know, so that that's the kind of stuff that's going on, the kind of plays that go on. So you know, it's just starting. You've done all this work to learn how to surf and you're on top. That's a new analogy. On top of the wave, you know, it, I wouldn't say sell now. You're going to be worth more this time next year, whatever you're doing, but learn more and more Amazon now that you're on um, your surfing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. It's when you start seeing the big institutional money come into something, it just pushes prices higher and higher and higher and makes those skills worth more your company worth more and whatever is associated with that valued at more. Yeah. It's interesting. Everything's affected, right? So even the, the uh, investment world uh, is, is affected. So um, uh, even the, I don't know if my volume went down there. The, uh, sorry, the, uh, um, even the investment world, the finance world is affected as well. So if you want a loan, let's say you're a seller, right? And you want to get a loan because you can't, you know, you want to get more inventory and get a better price from your wholesale or you want to um, invest in your marketing or you want to, you know, uh, hire an agency. That money is cheaper than ever. And you can actually repay it back with your future sales. Okay. There's no equivalent of that in the old world, you know, but it's so hot that the money is so cheap that that exists. Okay. So, or, you know, if it's, a, if it's not a bridge loan, uh, if it's not just an outright loan from your bank who hears Amazon and they're like, okay. Whereas before, if you're a small business owner, they'd be like, what? You know, um, you know, so there's that kind of environment. As long as you put Amazon on it, we're good. Okay. Yeah. I recently, um, going into fourth quarter last year, I was able to get a, $100,000 line of credit from the bank, completely financed by the inventory in the business. So I didn't have yep. to put my house up or anything else. And it's only a 5.9% interest. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. The, the opportunity is just going up and up. Right. For sure. And so, but if you have a brand and you're looking for a VC investment, you know, like to just pump the brand. I'm like, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go for it. We're in our space. We, you know, we've, we've walked, and now we have the best dog toy out there in this particular niche. We just need some, we need some fuel, right? That money is cheaper than ever. Okay, and so in that can you can give that up in equity. Uh, you can give that up in uh, again, you know, just finance it through inventory. There's a number of ways of doing that. So I encourage you, don't. Don't let anything hold you back from going faster and faster and faster. Yeah, for sure. And I think that kind of stuff is really important to to remember and keep in mind because a lot of people just look at like the profit that they made. So you sold a million dollars and made $150,000 profit off of that. And they're only looking at that and not looking at the bigger picture of what, you know, if you decide to sell the company at some point, what you can actually make on it. Yes. So it makes, it gives you a bigger perspective of what you're building and that it's, you know, it's bigger than just the profit that you're making. It, exactly. And that changed. I mean, it was, it was true, but it's now everything's kind of crunched down because of COVID. You know, the, la- the next three or four years was 
kind of crunch down into this year, I think, um, uh, because of that, everything's moving a little even more fast, but, but yeah, you know, if you, I would encourage you, if you, you know, to, to own a brand. Okay. I mean, I know you can sell and the like, but the, the real environment, if you can afford it, if you can get there and you get the resources to grow a brand. And what I mean by that is grow a brand in all senses, marketing wise, both on and off Amazon, uh, you, and fire on as many of those cylinders as possible. You will, you will have many suitors outside of your door um, in the coming years. Yep, hundred uh, percent. The more intellectual property that you can own, the better. Uh, yes. The wholesale world that might be you know exclusive agreements. Uh, maybe you pick up some trademarks and stuff like that, but primarily it's going to be exclusive agreement contracts. Yep companies for selling their products yeah you know let's let's talk about wholesale real quick um you know that is uh just getting started as well um you know there are i have manufacturers actually one of the largest ones in canada um has four thousand products they skipped the two thousands they have done nothing digital at all i'm not even talking i'm seriously not even a website i mean they have a website but not you can't order through it and you know they're used. It's a good old boys distributed network where the sales rep of the of the region of the region of the region. You know you call them up or fax in your order because you know for you to to get your uh, let's say you're a mom and pop hardware store. Okay, you wanted to restock your inventory. Well, you call these guys and you know you'd fax in your order and it might show up in a week or two. You know um, with a, missing a few items because they were out of stock. Well, guess where they're going to get their they're going to place their next order, right? <laughs> and so they're out of a job. And so the, the point is that we've all gone back to this manufacturer has 4,000 products and needs help getting up on Amazon. And so, you know, either as a distributor role, they help them up that way or going up to them and helping them themselves, you know, as themselves, that there's all kinds of plays there. But it's all just getting started because that manufacturer has been around for 75 years you know, the family owned business that's worth a billion dollars. Right. And guess what? There's like a thousand of those. Yep. For sure. <laughs> so, so, and that hasn't, you know, they all need help. Everybody needs help. So yeah. instead of five times, I think, right. You need to just build those relationships, get them to know, like, and trust you and work that into an exclusive agreement or something along those lines. Exactly. It's easy to forget when you're in Amazon all day, every day that most people have no clue how Amazon works. You know, it's just <laughs> yeah. one of those things that it's easy to forget about, but you got to keep that in mind that most people just, they don't know how to sell on Amazon. They don't want to know necessarily, but they maybe know that we need to be on there, but that's about it. Uh, I will, I'll tell you right now that 75% of listings on Amazon are not fully optimized. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So, and that's where, again, that's where Thras is coming through and others are coming through to gobble up all those apples and polish them. I don't know I, what analogy I used back then, but um, so, you know, so yes, I mean, it's just, it's explosive. And, you know, if you are a seller or a brand or own a brand or have the opportunity to own a brand, um, you know, you're just, it's going to, it's going to be good for a while. So, yep. hundred percent. All right. Very cool. Anything else we should cover on the venture capital side? I don't think so. Um, just know that there, uh, it's, you know, um, if you haven't refi, if you're in the U S you haven't refinanced your home, I would suggest that you look at those, the, 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 the rates right now. And it's the same thing in the Amazon environment. If you need money, the cost of money is lower than ever. Yep. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, on that. Uh, so Amazon used to have, uh, Amazon financial, which they probably still do, but you'd be able to get those loans through Amazon yeah. And it would typically be like 16, 17, 18%. Now they're going through a, another company. I'm drawing a blank on the name, but those interest rates now are like seven, 8%. Uh, so yeah, it's the price of money is going down. You can yeah. take that money. If you can't make double or triple, quadruple 8%, uh, you're doing something wrong. Exactly. Exactly. If you right, and it's just a matter of you know if you have cash flow problems, it's the purpose of that. And so, um, but yeah, absolutely for sure. All right, let's uh, shift gears and talk about the the distribution model changes that you're seeing and how people are going direct to consumer and all that. Yeah, 
Yeah, we we touched on a little bit of it, but you know, um, I mean, I got a whole, I got ahead of ourselves, so I apologize. But um, you know, really, it's those manufacturers with those with products that um, you know, again, kind of operate in that even the old world, uh, the old old world, in the sense that everything was done over the phone uh, through a dist- you know through a distribution network. Um, everybody was kind of getting their cut, and at the end, it would end up on the. You know, I'll use the um, an example of one I ran into uh, last uh, week. It's the jewelry industry. Okay, so you can think of a ring, right? So uh, the ring, I think I got my ring at Macy's. Okay, uh, my writing band. Mm-hmm. This is not, you know, it's just a generic band. I thought it was made by Macy's, but it's turned out it's by made by a manufacturer. You know, somewhere four people, four distributors back. They all got a cut of it, and to the I didn't get it at the mall, but let's say I got it or at the at Macy's or at the mall. There were probably four people taking a cut of that. Okay, um, now the jeweler realizes. Well, I actually got into it because a distributor, one of those four people, if you back, you know, three people you back into that got a cut as it got it to the mall. One of them called me and said, "You know, I don't need these other two guys. I want to go straight up to Amazon with the pricing I get for the rings I get." You know, and so and it's true of any product, right? So the distributor's like, "Okay," so uh, he he's killing it on Amazon. Well, his the guy that gave it to him, the guy that got it from the manufacturer, that gave it to that distributor, he realizes, well, I could put it back up on Amazon, right? I, mean, I, I could put this thing up on Amazon. Why do I have to let this guy do it? You know, I'll realize uh, uh, the retail price or a good chunk of that retail price that all these guys were divvying up. Now I can realize it. Well, the reality now is also, if you're smart and you're a manufacturer, you realize, well, why do I need any of these guys? My distributor is Amazon. I'm going to put it straight up on Amazon. Okay, so you can see how you know depending on your slicing it again, your a lot of your audiences you know uh, maybe you know wholesalers or the like, um, they're in no danger. But you know they all may be aware that at any point the people that supply them product could also do this stuff, yeah. right? And so that's what I mean by that. It's that's whole that whole stack of you know distributors or, or you know whatever whatever you, word you want to apply to it is has kind of collapsed. Thanks to Jeff Bezos, <laughs> you know, and there's just a lot of product, 80% of the product, I'm throwing out these statistics, you know, I hate statistics, but really 80% of the product out there is not on Amazon yet. And that's where it is. It's all that wholesale product that's not here yet. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, you know, going direct to the brand, I buy a lot directly from the brand, cutting out that middleman, as you say, the distributors yep. and stuff. And in the past, that wasn't necessarily something that was possible. Right. Uh, everybody was going through distributors for the most part. So it's definitely changing big time. I had an interesting conversation the other day with uh, uh, one of the, the sales reps for the company that I'm buying direct from. Um, and he's like, yeah, it's, it's really weird. I was trying to figure out, you know, you're in the middle of the country in Utah, but for some reason you're buying a bunch of stuff that's made for salt water. And <laughs> it was like, figuring out this Amazon stuff. It's, it's always interesting. It throws our systems all out of whack because I, now it's like, okay, maybe we should be selling salt water stuff in, in Utah, <laughs> which yeah, yeah. doesn't make sense of course, but yeah, I, I literally talked to a company, uh, uh, there were a distributor, they were supplying sellers, all kinds of sellers to the tune of about, I think it was around like 20 or $22 million. They were, you know, funneling product to sellers to put up on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And the founder just like literally rolled out of bed one morning. He's like, why don't I just do this? You know, like, I mean, literally it was like, duh, like he'd been in the space and didn't realize like, well, I could just hire somebody like an agency or hire some people or learn this, do this myself, which I wouldn't encourage, but you know, and just put it up myself and did all those people were out of business. You know, those two distributors were you know gone. They of course probably went off, got different product, but you know, it's just, it's an interesting world. But Yeah. Things are changing. There's going to be more and more of that. Uh, that's where your Amazon expertise really comes into play because uh, a lot of these uh, brands and businesses are going to need help. They're not just going to wake up. Yeah. He woke up one morning and said, why don't I do this? But He's still got to figure it all out. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's the hard part. Help you with it or whatever the case may be. So that goes back to the job market as well for positions like this. So it's, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's great for your career. Um, but if you know how to do a lot of this also, you know, and you're in a position again, 
you know, invest in a brand, you know, find something that you can own and you can, you know, bring to life. And it might even be a side thing. And again, I'm sure a lot of your audience is already doing this, mm -hmm. um, but nurture that brand because that we're in an environment where it's, you know, it will, again, saying about fifth time, but it's, you know, we're in an environment where uh, it will uh, rise much faster than, um, than most assets, any other asset that you may have. <laughs> so, you know, and um, there's going to be a lot of brand uh, portfolios, I think, that are being going to be put together. Um, I, I'll give you an example, uh, a, a quick story. I, I'm actually really friends. Uh, I'm not going to name the company, but I'm a good friends with the uh, CRO of a very large seasoning company out there. And their biggest nightmare is that somebody's going to come along, you know, maybe with some capital, um, buy up some of the darling seasonings that are coming up on Amazon, identify them, put them together, rebrand them into sort of like a line of, you know, seasonings and take on, take them on in six months, you know, where that would have taken 60 years to do that in the past. They, they it took, they've nurtured those brands forever, you know, and, and, but that's their nightmare right now. And so, uh, because everybody's buying on Amazon, right? So anyway, interesting stuff. hundred percent. And, and kind of, uh, another aspect of that as, uh, I'm a wholesaler, right? So I sell other people's products on Amazon. Um, but I've also been looking at buying brands. Yep. You know, I've actually discussed it with this one company. They're uh, an older mom and pop kind of business. And, uh, you know, they're, they're still, uh, a lot of the systems are kind of olden day systems that they've got running and stuff like that. Yep. And so I talked about potentially, you know, buying the business or licensing the product or something like that. And, um, they're, they're definitely interested. They wanted to wait until after COVID stuff to see what happens there and things. But, uh, that's a, another route that we can go, you know, we're making profit from selling other people's products. We can take some of that profit and maybe buy a brand or buy a private label. Yep. Um, I know uh, Scott Needham, who is one of the owners of Buy Boxer, they do about sixty million in sales on Amazon yep. uh, of other people's products. Uh, they've recently acquired a, a private label brand, yep. and now they're growing that because they look at that brand, what they currently have on Amazon. They're like, with with all the knowledge that we have we can make those products even better and make back our money that we spend quite rapidly. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, and maybe I, uh, and that's, you know, kind of where it's going is, you know, your unicorn dust, right. That you, you know, may use on other people's products, um, either whether you're a wholesaler and you're getting the best pricing and maybe exclusive, you know, exclusive online retail uh, agreements, but you're ultimately selling somebody else's product. You don't have any equity in that product necessarily. I would also, you know, again, you're getting probably getting a pricing, you're making a lot of money and that's great. Right. Um, but you know, at, at that point, but you're not really building equity. And so if you can then over time or, you know, outright start a brand from scratch, or if you, there's brands out there that you're, you know, reselling or the like you believe in, as you were saying, you know, can, you know, maybe I'll reduce my rates or I'll do, I'll reduce all, I'll, I won't charge any service fees. We're going to be, this is going to be a partnership, but I also want an equity stake in this brand. Let's go do this together kind of thing. Um, you know, literally as you know, together, um, there's some of that, uh, there's sales performances also as well. So, I mean, so it doesn't have to be an, so an equity stake, but you know, the one thing that does exist in this space, which does not exist anywhere else is that you can say, I want 20% of sale. No, okay. 5% of sales, you know, as a performance incentive as well. And so there's a lot of you know uh, barriers that are you know kind of falling if that makes sense, but the ones that will have the nicest exit if you execute on all the things are the ones that are going to own Amazon brands, brands that have made the jump to Amazon. Yep, for sure. Yeah, wild wild west as we said. <laughs> yeah. Surfing wild wild west. Oh, yeah, yeah, those. lots of fun. <laughs> Apples. It's a, just a fun space. I love just coming into work. Every day, learning something new, figuring stuff out, building business—it's—it's it's a lot of fun for sure. It is. It is. It's a fun space. And then when you think you know something, and like you run into something, you're like, oh, like you know, like there's great work going on that in all kinds of spaces with data and um, tools that are being developed, and just some great creative and, and those type of things as well. Yeah, it's a fun space. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap this up by talking a little bit about uh, internationalization um, and selling overseas and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, I, 
I, th- I, th- I think this is important because it, it really just sort of a, just another multiplier out there, right? Of just, you know, things are so awesome on the Amazon.com uh, marketplace. And there's so many things to execute there, right? Uh, again, most people, I would contend, are not f- doing all the things. Like if you're not doing uh, influencer or affiliate, you know, if you don't know, uh, you know, if you're not doing, uh, you know, review management or you know things along those lines, there's still lots of thing gold to mine in the dot com environment. But once you get that down, or soon before getting all that down. You should think about internationalization. So it's no brainer to go to MX and CA um, from just a distribution standpoint. But it's actually, believe it or not, no harder to go to Europe or to EU or India or uh, uh, you know all of the fourteen marketplaces, international marketplaces that are out there right now. Follow Jeff around the globe, right? Um, and I would just add also, it's easier to get listed in Mercado Libre in Brazil, and it's easier to get listed on Alibaba. And it's, you know, so a lot of these products, if you sell hammers, either wholesaler or your brand, you know, if you manufacture or whatever, those ha- hammer is a hammer, you know, whether it be in Malaysia or in the US. And so, um, and they ship really well too. They're kind of heavy, but they ship well. Um, so think internationalization as well, because now you're looking at, reflecting your talents out your your sales out across the world but it's the first time that's ever happened so if you need another wave to surf you know there's one coming behind it and another one coming behind it and another one coming behind it yep so so essentially amazon owns the world and we just play yeah. it now. <laughs> yes there there is a frontline uh do you i don't know if you watch pbs frontline uh there's a pre pbs frontline documentary uh that i think is mandatory to watch it's called amazon empire um and uh it's a two-hour special it's fantastic um and it outlines that yes he will own e-commerce and probably space he and elon will own space and all the other things as well but i, I recommend that uh pbs frontline documentary um again i think it's called amazon empire Yep. Yeah, and it's interesting that Jeff Bezos just stepped down as CEO. Uh, he's now only <laughs> head of the board uh, yeah. because he wants to focus on his other endeavors like going to Mars and things like yeah, that. his toys. Yeah. Yes. Lots of, yeah. lots of excitement out there. Yeah, actually, that documentary is, uh, it starts out with him. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but like, I think it's eighth grade. He's holding up like this. He won a science fair and he's holding up this article that he wrote in the school paper. And it's like, people are consuming too many of the, you know, the resources of the earth. We've got to get off the earth and to save humanity, we've got to go to the stars or something like that. That will be my goal in life, you know? <laughs> and it's like, that's how the documentary starts. It's like, oh, okay. Like, that's what drives the man. It's not selling things. It's, this is just to consume, you know, to, to fund us getting off the planet. And I hope you not. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time. You know, it's, it's no longer the, the space race. It's the Mars race right yeah, now. Yeah. Trying to go all the way to Mars instead of just the moon or something like that. So that is, that is if you're a lot of fun to watch. If you're a trillionaire or whatever, you know, sure. Yep, yep, 100%. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, Chris, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show. Uh, any last words of wisdom before we close out? Um, I think it's Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Um, you know, it, it's a good space, and it, it's just um, it, it's where you want to carve yourself out. And I would hold on because it's going to be a pretty wild ride. But if you need help along the way on anything with respect to any aspect of Amazon, please uh, think of in reach. Yep, nreach.com, letter N, reach.com. Check it out. All right, Chris, appreciate it, and you have an awesome day. Thank you so much. This has been another episode of the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow entrepreneur, and always remember, success is yours if you take it.